Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Gulfstream at breakfast at Gulfstream Park. We'll call it with a special 12 p.m. post today. So we'll be starting the show, if you're watching right now, at 11 a.m. Of course, if uh, you didn't know about the 12 o'clock post, you can watch it a little later on on GulfstreamPark.com. So the main track is fast. The turf course is firm. Uh, final day of the week. And what an exciting day yesterday. Not only the great 12 races here, but a lot of money here at Gulfstream Park, of course, essential quality winning the Belmont Stakes. So it was just a great day to see people back out here at Gulfstream Park. There were lots of people. And finally, we may be turning the corner with this pandemic that seemed to uh, have us uh, under the control for about a year and a half. So it was good to see all the folks out here yesterday. So as I mentioned at the top, the main track is fast. The turf course is firm. And let's delve right into the Sunday card here. The first race is One Mile Maiden Claimer, three-year-olds and up $12,500. Very early in the wagering. The number three horse, Meteorito, is the current favorite, and I'll tell you why. Turning back to the one-turn mile on the dirt after prompting the winner last time out and finishing second against Simula. That was going nine furlongs on the turf. Uh, this trainer, Juan Revivito, is two for three at the meeting. Both his horses, three, oh, three of his horses have run well, and he's got his go-to jock, Carlos Lugo. Carlos Lugo a bud for both those previous victories. Number eight, Maxi Moon, is I think a candidate for a rebound performance after following a pair of really solid route races at this level with a clunker from the rail last time out. I think this horse might be better than the last race might maybe make you believe. So Maxi Moomin, I think, on the rebound today, second choice on the board. Then the inside horse, number one, Sandy Dude. This one's going to drop. Going to stretch out to the mile again after finishing a distance sixth. But that was against 20 maidens going three quarters of a mile. Barry Croft, Miguel Vasquez handling the added distance, I think, the drop for sure will help, and the added distance might help also. So that is how I see the opener, three, eight, and one. Second race this afternoon, two-year-olds, my favorite part of racing here in the summer at Gulfstream Park, and this is Maiden claiming two-year-olds, $50,000, <clears> excuse me, and I did go with the number seven in here, Awesome Crusader, who drops to the $50,000 level, stretches out the five-eighths of a mile. You look last time out, chased the pace and faded. That was its special weight debut, going four and a half furlongs. I love the work that Ralph Nix does when he makes his uh, two-year-olds making their second start. It's 15%. I think this horse has a lot of upside. The drop to the 50 level should be good for him. What about the four Cajun Cracker, who's the son of Cajun Breeze, debuting from Mike Yates with a couple of stamina-enhancing workouts showing over the track. Jesus Rios, who's his rider for his two-year-olds, will be in the saddle. And then the, the other horse I used was the number six horse in his Swiss dancer, who's dropping to the $50,000 level today Going back to the main track, you know, and after and you know, following his third place finish, now that was going to four and a half furlongs in the dirt. Comes back and runs fourth against special weight foes, going five on the grass. So you got the experience angle on your side. Miguel Vasquez will be in the saddle this afternoon. So I just thought with that previous experience, already going for its third race, one on the dirt, one on the turf. Now back on the dirt again. Race number three is a five furlong turf event. These are maiden claiming Phillies and Mass three year olds and up $35,000. I started it off in here with the number five, Miss Domina, who's a $170,000 daughter of Dominus, who's going to go to the turf today after stalking the pace and fading in its special weight debut uh, for trainer George Weaver, who's really good with this kind of class drop. He's over 25%, actually 26%. MSCL Jaramillo had a good day yesterday handling this really beautifully bred sophomore. Now, Lady's Choice, who's going to make her first start, we're going to go back and show you this performance. She ran really well that day. She's going to make her first start. She dueled throughout. Now you see her on the inside. Now you see she's dueling through the stretch, and she comes up, and now you see two horses coming up on her outside. One of those is the uh, four to five favorite, simply the best. The other one is uh, Lime, and they just both come on, and they come on. All three of them hit the wire together. Actually, the first two horses in that race, including the favorite, uh, we get a dead heat for the win. And ladies' choice right there in second. I thought it was a good performance. Mike Yates, Miguel Vasquez, Hanley the drop into the maiden claiming rank. So that was a good performance by her. And as I mentioned, the first two finishes actually finished in the dead heat. And they were, you know, certainly lower odds than ladies' choice was. So I think that horse can run well. The other horse is Summer Beauty, who's stepping up a level after rallying to finish third. 
It was 28 to 1 that day against 25 maidens going five panels on the turf. So we'll see how that one runs in there. But I think the race goes through the five. Excuse me, in the number seven. Now, our stake race of the afternoon is early on. It is in race number four. Seven furlongs, fillies and mares. Three-year-olds and up $60,000, and I really like Don't Get Cozy in this spot. It's wheeling back after following a really commanding $25,000 optional claiming score with a solid second-place finish against those $62,500 allowance optional claimers. Going to seven furlong distance, what I like. Really consistent daughter of Kozan, who she's 18 for 25 uh, in the money in her career. We try and pad those statistics with our leading jock, Edgar Zayas in the saddle today. So don't get cozy in the Bal Harbor. That $60,000 event, as I mentioned, for Phillies and Miz, three-year-olds. And uh, then you get Halawala, who's making her first start since uh, failing to handle the competition. They jumped her up. That was in the grade three Royal Delta, going a mile and a 16th during the championship meet. The trainer, Juan C. Avila, what a weekend is he having? I think he had three wins on Friday, a win again on a Saturday. So he's the going well and Hector Berrios aboard for a couple of those victories so that is Hollowalla and you got the old buddy in here number three Crumbon who will try to turn the tables on don't get cozy after tracking the pace and finishing sort of an even fourth behind our last time out Larry Bates Luca Panici in the saddle so that is our stakes race today the Bal Harbor race number four what that means we'll take a short little break when I come back I'll have my rainbow six ticket Welcome back to Gulfstream today, and good morning, everyone. 11.10 a.m. We got that special 12 p.m. post this afternoon. Race number five is about seven and a half furlongs on the turf. These are claimers, three-year-olds of four and up, non-winners of three in life, 12, five down to 10,000. We did have a couple of scratches, not many very scratches on the card today, so we scratched the 12 and the 13 in this particular race. And, and I always thought, even with the scratches, that the number five fig jelly uh, is the one to beat. This one moving to the bottom. Bobby Hespon uh, via the claim and immediately drops to the 12-5 level and f after finishing in a duel for the lead and fade out and going a mile on the grass. Oh, there's my ticket up there. So I just wanted to show you that I did go three deep in this race with the one, five, and nine. So, and I was talking about Fig Jelly. In race number six, number three, Never at All, Nysa. I have an interest in that one. It's a half sister to crowd favorite here, Little Meatball, and Better Be Swift. Race number seven, I like the trouble. I don't like the trouble the heart of God is. I like the chances that horse has today. Also use Cajun Lady in there. And the one play error. I couldn't separate these. That's why I got $64.80 today. Devil's, Devil's Sky I really like in race number eight this afternoon and also use the four in their back chat and then in race number nine, too deep I, I think the race goes through Awesome Raw who's a really hard knocking seven year old mare. I use My Destiny and in the last race I used the 11 a little bit of a price there. I had a really bad start last time out. Awesome View and Pretzel on the inside is back to where this horse should run well with uh, tilting windmills a little bit. So now getting Getting back to the fifth, uh, fifth race, as I said, I was talking about Fig Jelly, goes to the Bobby Hess Jr. Bond. The point I was trying to make, we saw a horse like this yesterday from the Bobby de Bona Bond. Uh, was claimed for a certain price, dropped down. You really can't compare the two, but uh, it's just a sake, shaky situation. Thus me going three deep in the opening level of my pick, of my Rainbow Six, excuse me. Number one, Osprey, 10 to 1 on the morning line, I believe. 
This one is dropping to the 12.5 level today and returning to the uh, from the freshening. Finished sort of a so-so fifth against those 20 condition claimers going a mile for Ralph Nix. Edgar Zay is handling the drop down in competition. I like this barn, as I mentioned before, second off the bench. Dropping down, Edgar Zay is our leading rider. Lots to like in there. What about the nine, King of Rock, who's turning to about, uh, around to about seven and a half furlongs after pressing the pace and finishing fourth uh, behind a horse called Positive Phil, and if you were with us yesterday, remember Positive Phil uh, went wire to wire to win our 10th race yesterday as the 5-2, to two, I believe second choice, but I'm not positive about that, but look, that was uh, Positive Phil in good form, so if you cue off their performance, Positive Phil, two wins in a row, King of Rock right there, looking him in the eye as far as he could, so maybe in this uh, easier spot, and the about 7.5 furlong distance will really help King of Rock today. Race number six this afternoon is a five furlong turf event. Main special weight, Phillies and Mares, three year olds and up, which starts our late pick five today in race number six. And as I mentioned when I was putting my Rainbow Six ticket together, I, I like the three in here, never at all. The French Fred, who I think should be. You know, primed and ready to score. Should go have some trouble at the start. Just bumped a bit and now finished second at this level and distance for Mark Cassie. Christian Torres in the saddle again, so I thought that was a logical horse in here. And as I mentioned, number seven, Nysa, I think it's a little bit of a price on the board, like 12 to 1. Well, she's a half sister to, as I mentioned, fan favorite, Little Meatball. And I think she should be ready to offer more. She returned from about a seven month layoff. She stalked the pace and finished fourth behind, never at all. For Mike Yates, Sammy Camacho handling that rematch between those top two. The number three up there as the favorite. The number seven up there at 12 to 1. They weren't uh, badly, you know, seven wasn't be badly beaten by the number three. And it's second off the bench, so we'll see how it runs. And you sort of got to use number two, better be swift on your ticket, who's stepping up today to special weight company after returning from the layoff to finish really a solid second going five furlongs against those $50,000 maidens. Uh, trainer Kathleen O'Connell, another one having a great weekend. She actually had two two-year winners the other day on Friday. She got M Miguel Vasquez at in at the controls today. So uh, uh, never at all for me. The seven, Nysa, and the number two, Better Be Swift in race number six. Race number seven today is a six furlong sprint. Now, this one is on the fast main track, and these are Phillies claimers, three year olds of Phillies and Mares, four and up, non winners of two. 20,000 down to 16,000. Did have a scratch in here of the number 11. And as I mentioned also when I was putting my ticket together about the trouble Heart of Guard had, first we're going to show the head on of the start when Heart of Guard is the number four horse in there. And you can just see this one get, gets a little bit of trouble here at the start. You're going to say, did just come over and give him the old squeeze play, push it really to the inside. And, and then we're going to just switch to 48 pole home after you see that bad start. And, and she pushed out in the stretch and she was uh, finished second in that race. You're going to see it there. She gets pushed out now. Here you're going to see the trouble in this race. She ends up finishing second and is placed first for the interference by that number seven horse, Sassy Beat, the long shot. So uh, I, I just thought it was a good performance that, uh, you know, she got pushed out a little bit and rightly so came down and got that victory for Peter Walder. Uh, you know, the, she was game in the stretch. She should have won that race. So you, you think she would have won that race and she had that trouble at the start as you saw her getting really pushed in and then bounced between horses. Number three, Cajun Lady is wheeling back after following her open length victory with a stalk to pace third. It was at this level in distance for Mr. Mike Yates, and he's got Jose Morello's handling, uh, I'm going to call this a bounce-rebound performance, who have followed that really nice victory, stalked to pace third at the distance, you know, strong maiden win, runs okay, maybe bounces back today and runs well. And then the inside horse, Play Era, here's where I was trying to go only too deep in the Rainbow Six, but I couldn't leave this horse off, thus the $64.80 for me. Uh, Play Era will depart from the rail after proving she could compete at this level when she followed her 12-5 uh, maiden victory with a second place finish behind a, a repeat winner called Sassy Beast and in front of Cajun Lady last time out. So uh, I, I kept struggling, wanting to use two in race seven, and, but I, I couldn't leave Play Era out. And interesting to see uh, how much money this horse takes. I mean, third on the morning line, it's a logical contender. It's not like it's any long shot or anything like that. I just didn't want to get beat by the horse today and thus I had to go down a little deeper in my pockets not my normal 4320 
race number eight this afternoon. So I like this race. And this is a mile and a 16th on the turf, maiden special weight, three-year-olds and upward, scratch the main track only to number two in here. And I, I just like Devil Skies, the son of Super Sire into mischief. And we're going to go back and show you the head on of the start when Devil Sky gets squeezed right out of the, and she's the number nine that day. And we'll see, he's the number nine that day. And we'll see what happens here at the start, first of all. And just gets, you know, the same things look similar to one we just showed here. But then we're going to go just before the eight pole. Now, there is the number nine in there. Now watch this, you know. This gets out, you know, nowhere to go. It's got to slam on the brakes. And guess what? The day is over for this horse. So double trouble last time out. I, I just think with a clean trip for George Weeder, he's 23% with his maidens making their second start. You got Edgar Sias in the saddle. You saw the start. You saw her having absolutely no chance getting checked out of there. And the horse was moving when it was checked. So Devil Sky, I like its chances very much this afternoon if this one can carve out a clean trip. Number four, Back Chap, is a half-brother to a local stakes winner called Vow to Recover, who's looking to make amends after surrendering that late lead when finishing second. Actually was the favorite that day at this level and distance. Uh, how about Edwin Gonzalez? He's just been tearing the place up. I think he had four wins yesterday and three the other day. I mean, he's just been on fire. Uh, he will be in the, chat, uh, in the saddle today for four Back Chat. And then you got the number five, Light Cruiser, who's stepping up the competition today, but rallied to finish third, was only beaten a length against 50 maidens going this mile and a 16th distance. So you would think this horse has a chance to improve. Actually, is the morning line favorite in there. So I guess the, he has a big chance to improve in there. But I'm going with Devil Sky. You saw the trouble trip. You see if you agree with me when you do your handicapping of race number eight. Race number nine today, five furlongs on the turf, allowance optional claimer, fillies and mares, three and up, or the optional claiming price of $25,000. Just a note here, you know, starting Monday morning, there will be put, you know, start working on putting in a new Tepeta track. So we won't be running five furlong turf races for about two or three weeks. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's going to be interesting to see how this uh, new track surface pay plays out. Plus, they're putting in new drainage. It's going to be great. And we're going to get a brand new tote board. So lots of great stuff are going to be happening here during the summer as far as the construction goes. And then the championship me will really let them roll with three different track surfaces Tepeta, of course, dirt and our great turf course. So that's coming down the road, as they say. The ninth race, as I mentioned, five on the grass. You got to go with Awesome Roar somewhere on your ticket. A consistent 10-time winner at the distance. That's right. She's going to try these 25 optional claimers today after a couple of solid sprints against those 16 starter allowance runners. Boy, she's a hard-knocking seven-year-old mare. She's got Edgar Zeiss in the saddle. This is her game, sprinting on the Gulfstream Park turf course. And Edgar Zeiss certainly adds to the appeal. Number three, My Destiny is stepping up the competition after responding to both the, uh, the combination of a surface switch and a turn back and distance with a solid uh, $35,000 non-winners of two lifetime claiming victory going five on the grass for Mr. David Fox, MCL Jaramillo in the saddle. Number five, Twirling Star is my other pick in here. Two for four in the money at the distance, turns back, went up last time out, set the pace, faded to finish six against allowance competition. That was going a mile on the Tampa turf. Sharon Boland is the trainer. You got Wilma Garcia handling that turn back and distance. So I'm just keying off this horse's performance at this distance in the past. Hasn't run well. I thought maybe this horse couldn't grab a share in there. Twirling Star is a big 15 to 1 on the morning line. So looking for a little bit of a uh, price maybe to put somewhere on the try and super ticket you can do that i'm going to wrap it up today with the 10th race it's a five and a half furlongs on the main track maiden claimers Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, $12,500. Scratch the number 10 horse, lucky to have my Vicky. And my topic in here is worry. And I want to just go back and just going to show you the head-on of this race uh, when the number, she was the number 11 that day. Just 
stumbles badly at the start and really ba basically really a bad stumble was okay during the race and, and just didn't get a chance to run after that so it's uh, you know if you go two back was a solid second at the distance that was against 16 maidens then shortens up as you saw lost all chance when she stumbled that was the start of a 12-5 maiden test going six furlongs for terry pompey miguel vasquez in the saddle put a line through that race go two back and I think the number 11, Warri, looks pretty tough in the nightcap for a little bit of a price. Number nine, Awesome View, who's the morning line favorite in here, who's now in the Ralph Nix barn. Uh, this one is uh, plunges to this 12-5 level on the dirt after stalking the pace and finishing fourth uh, against Maiden Special Weight Competition. Now, that was going five on the grass. It was up at the Tampa Bay. Note the barn is pretty solid. Horses going from turf to dirt about 21%. I think they're just trying to find the right, right spot for number nine, Awesome View, and this looks like a good spot. What about the number one pretzel? This one drops in, back into a competitive situation. If you go three starts back, this one was second at this level in distance. Then runs fourth against $20,000, two lifetime, uh, you know, $20,000 claim is two starts back, and then loses all chance last time out when she stumbles at the start, and they step this one up to maiden special weight competition. And that was also going six and a half furlong. Edgar Zayas is going to ride a pretzel in here, and I just go, I'm keen off that race so three back i think it's a big chance in here at against this level also going five and a half furlongs so that's how we see the 10 races here on uh, early sunday morning i'm going to take a short back break and come back with a really exciting lightning round we'll check it out in just a couple of moments and go Zephyr is pulling away impressively And welcome back to Gulfstream Today. Ron Nicoletti here. And as I said, we're going to start the lightning round. And what better way to start it? We'll go pick up the stretch call of the 153rd Belmont Stakes. We just pick it up. And uh, it was a good performance. Now you see turning for home. And I mean, there was a serious duel up front between Hot, Hot Rod Charlie and Rock Your World. An essential quality the two-year-old champ. Certainly took advantage of that. But boy, you can't take it away from Hot Rod Charlie. Was fighting right till the end. I mean, these two ding dong did to the wire, but essential quality, as I mentioned, two year old champ certainly stamped himself as the three year old champ with that win. Going to be interesting to see where he goes there. Brad Cox gets his first uh, a triple crown victory. He might get two if they take uh, uh, the horse down in the belt in the uh, Kentucky Derby. Excuse me. But one of my favorite horses came back yesterday, and I'm talking about Diamond Oops, and we're going to pick up the stretch call with Diamond Oops went in the Hollywood Lakes, and uh, yeah, she had to work for it. She is the number four there, and it was tough going all the way down. You know, she had to get going, and good ride by Lu Luca Panici to get up under the shadow of wire. Boy, that three, they bet that horse. He was The three was the actual favorite. Diamond Oops is just so game. Now six for 10 on the dirt. There's that photo. Great photo win. Six for 10 now on the main track at Gulfstream Park. She's also, he's also, I should say, a stakes winner, graded stakes winner on the grass, so you like to see that. And you know our leading trainer here is Safi Joseph Jr. Boy, he took him to the uh, up took him to task up there at Belmont Park yesterday. One of our favorite horses here. Drain the clock. You know, just running very well. Wins the Woody Stevens for Sappy Joseph. Boy, and this was hard to do. Good price, 7-1. to one, And Sappy gets his uh, grade one victory in the Woody Stevens. It was just a great performance by Drain the Clock. Uh, of course, we'll be seeing that horse back here in the championship meet. Uh, winning the grade one, Woody Stevens. Boy, that Sappy, he's just having... A fantastic year. He's our leading trainer by many. He's got brave one victories all over the place. And then we got a fan favorite, too, that won up at Belmont Park, and that is Latruska. And Latruska, who won the grand, grade three rampart here, comes and wins the grade one octave fifth for Fausto Gutierrez. It was just, uh, an, uh, you know, a 
Tordy Force performance by this horse. That was its second grade one win. And, of course, Fausto spends his winters down here. And, uh, you know, he just does a great job and he's a good guy and great for him to win that. So just a couple of Gulfstream horses going up there and really taking those horses up in Belmont to the woodshed. So it was a great day of resting, racing both here and, as I mentioned, up north. So got about 33 minutes before first race to pick five pool, already over 20 two thousand dollars we got this early start today so uh have some coffee maybe have an english muffin and be back here for the first race good luck everybody and they're off second in the two path 